in this lecture we will discuss about uh, how to deal with uh, shares in securities that is the chargeable gain tax issues pertaining to shares in securities so first of all uh, following uh, types of securities are exempt and there will be no cgt consequences so first of all the listed government securities that is the uh, treasury stocks or uh, guilds or the guilds uh, securities uh, pertaining to government securities similarly the qualifying corporate bonds companies loan stocks and shares held in an isa remember that the guilds and the qualifying corporate bonds are exempt in case of individual but not in case of the corporation now as far as the qcb is concerned so the characteristics of qcb is it is a normal commercial loan which is non convertible which is held in sterling and issued after 13th of march 1984 or if uh, the uh, shares was held uh, the acquired so acquired after it so it means that if uh, shares are being acquired before 13th march 1984 then this uh, is not considered as qualifying corporate bond and there will be no exemption on it now as far as the shares valuation is concerned remember that first of all you have to identify you are transferring shares to a connected party or unconnected party so if shares are being transferred or sold to an unconnected party then whatever is the actual proceed received we have to consider that but if there is a lifetime transfer of shares lifetime gift or transfer to a connected person that is a close family members like that then the market value is to be used because in this case there will be either no proceed or there will be a proceed less than the market value so market value is to be considered and if the shares are quoted shares or unquoted shares it depends on that so if the shares are unquoted shares then the market value or the proceed will be given you in the exam and if it's a quoted shares then the market value uh, is to be calculated or the value is to be calculated in uh, the exam using the mid price rule that is the official listing price the higher value or the lower value will be given and you have to identify the mid price as the lower value plus the higher value divided by 2 in this way the mid price has been calculated 230 pence so this is the shares valuation rule for cgt purpose remember that the shares valuation rule for iht purpose is bit different from the cgt keep in mind now as we know that uh, uh, usually we purchase shares in a company on uh, most occasions so sometime it would be difficult to relate the disposal of shares with the purchase of shares so for that purpose there is an identification rule and that identification rule for individual says that if you have disposed of shares then you have to compare or there will be a matching of the disposal disposal shares with the purchased shares in the following order so first of all the consider the disposal shares with the same day purchase for example if you have sold shares on 15th of december then identify if there is any shares purchased on the same date if there are shares then consider disposal of that particular shares if not then use following 30 day rule that means consider that in the subsequent period if you have purchased any shares then relate the disposal of shares with the following 30 day shares and if there are more than one purchase in the following 30 day shares then use first in first out basis and if there are no same day purchase no following 30 day then use the share pool identify the shares from the pool pool means that all the shares before the same day will be part of share pool and a pool will comprises of number of shares and cost of shares now let's see this identification rule with the help of this example so following are the detail of purchases 10000 shares purchased on 1st january 14 then 20000 shares purchased then 30000 shares purchased and then 10000 and then 2000 now the disposal held at 15th of august 
and 16,000 shares has been disposed of at a price of 80,000. Now let's find out the identification rule first. So we have to compare this 16,000 shares. So first of all, the date of disposal is 15th August. Let's see, is there any purchase on 15th August 19? Yes, 10,000 shares purchased. So 10,000, we have to take 10,000 from this date. And then from the following 30 day, so after 15th of August, there is purchase on 29th of August. So this is following 30 day. There are 2000 shares. So out of 16,000 shares disposed of 12,000 is compared with the same day and following 30 day rule. Now the remaining shares we have to consider with share pool. So from pool, how much shares is to be considered? So out of 16,000, we have to take 4,000 shares from the pool. So this is the identification method uh, in the case of individual. Same day, 30 day and then following, following 30 day and then share pool. So as far as in this example is concerned, 10,000, 2,000, so pool. Let's construct a pool. How we can construct a pool? So as far as pool is concerned, pool includes number of shares, a column and cost of shares. So first of all, uh, first January 14, 10,000 shares, 10,000 shares at a cost of 40,000. Then 20,000 shares. What is the cost? 85,000. Date is 1st July 16, 1st July 18, 30,000. And the cost is 100,000. So you can see that uh, now we have total 60,000 shares and the cost is 185 and 40 so it's 2 lakh 25000 shares so how much is related with share pool 4000 so disposal of 4000 shares from the pool deduct and there is 56000 shares left so this is carried forward shares now we have to identify the cost of 4000 shares so the cost of 4,000 shares is how we can calculate the cost is 2,25,000 of 60,000 shares. This is the per share cost multiplied by 4,000 shares. So the answer is uh, 15,000. So the 4,000 shares cost is 15,000. This is the average cost. And from 2,25,000 deduct 15,000. So this is the leftover amount that is 2,10,000. Now this is the pool has been constructed. Now, if we have to calculate gain, so as per the identification, so we have to calculate gain separately on each identification. So now let's calculate chargeable gain. So first of all, the first one is relates to the same day, so same day, 10,000 shares. We have to relate 10,000 shares. So selling price of 10,000 shares and cost of 10,000 shares. So as far as cost is concerned, the 10,000 shares have been purchased at a cost of 50,000. So the cost is 50,000. Now selling price is given total 16,000 shares has sold at 80,000. So how much 10,000 shares? So if 60,000, uh, 80,000 is the selling proceed of 16,000 shares. So how much relate to the 10,000 shares? So as far as this is concerned, if we receive 80,000 against 
sixteen thousand shares. Then for ten thousand, it is fifty thousand. Selling price is fifty thousand, and cost is also fifty thousand. So no gain, no loss. As far as the following thirty days concerned, its cost is two thousand shares at four thousand. So first of all, sale proceed. Similarly, we have uh, eighty thousand proceed of sixteen thousand shares. So it's five per share. And two thousand shares, so five into two, it's ten thousand proceed, and minus cost of two thousand shares, it is given as uh, four thousand. So in this case, we have six thousand of gain, and as far as the pool is concerned, the remaining price. So we have adjusted uh, how much shares into the pool. The pool is four thousand shares, so four thousand shares. So five into four, this is twenty thousand. Proceed related to this, twenty, fifty, seventy, fifty, ten, sixty, sixty, and twenty. So minus cost that we have considered from the pool. So from the pool, the value was fifteen thousand, cost was fifteen thousand, and a gain of five thousand. So in this way, so overall gain is first one is zero, second one is six thousand, and third one is five thousand. So there is a gain of eleven thousand on the disposal of shares. Now one issue that uh, you have to face is. the bonus shares so if there are bonus shares so what to do with bonus shares what to do with bonus shares so as far as bonus shares is concerned so bonus shares are given to existing shareholders free of cost as per an agreed ratio and this ratio might be 1 for 4 it might be 1 for 2 anything can be possible so how you can adjust in as far as the identification rule is concerned so for bonus shares always be part of share pool irrespective of the date of bonus shares always consider this bonus shares in the pool so what what do you do increase the number of shares no effect would be on the cost column because the bonus shares are free now as far as the right shares are concerned how it is different from bonus shares it is given to existing shareholders it is given to existing shareholders at a price which is usually the discounted price and as per agreed ratio such as 1 4 2 1 4 three 1 4 4 the shareholder has the choice of accepting the right or selling the right this is possible that shareholder might sell these shares what was the treatment always be part of share pool so irrespective of the date always consider it in the share pool so increase the number of shares and increase the cost now let's uh, check an example with the help of the bonus and right shares so for example let's see the details of purchases
So following are the details of purchases. First of all, 15,000 shares. Then there is a right. After that, a new purchase. Then there is a bonus. Then there is a purchase. Then there is a purchase. And then the disposal of shares on 31st December 2019. We have to calculate taxable gain. So first of all, the identification criteria. Check the disposal date first, December 2019. There is, is there any same day purchase? So there is no same day purchase. Following 30 day. Yes, there is following 30 day. And then share pool. There is right and bonus as well. So the identification, first of all. So as far as the identification, is there any same day? So we will see nil, no same day. Is there any following 30 day purchase? So for following 30 days, we have how much shares? 1500 shares in the following 30 day. So the remaining we have to consider from share pool. Total disposal is 4500. So how much shares we have to consider from the pool? 3000. Now gain calculation. Computation of gain. So there is no same day. So that means uh, first of all from the 28th January 2020. Selling price. So 1500 shares. So selling price is total 22,500. 22,500 of 4,500 shares. It relates to 1500 shares. And the proceed is 7,500. What is the cost? Cost of 1500 shares. And the cost is 3000. So as a result, the chargeable gain is 4,500. So subsequently, uh, as far as the pool is concerned, so selling price of the remaining shares, that is 3,000. 4,500 into 3,000. 3000 share selling price is 15,000 and the pool. So we have to consider the cost from the pool working. What to do now? Make a pool. So share pool. Pool comprises of number of shares and the related cost. So you can see that uh, as far as pool is concerned, so first of all, the first purchase and we have first purchases was 1500 then a right. So 1500 shares and the cost was 900. Then there was a right. One is two. One is two, three at 0 0.70. So 1500 shares divided by three. So it's 500.7. So 0 0.7 make it 350. Now after write, the balance becomes 2000 shares and the cost is now 1250. Then after that, there is a normal purchase. A normal purchase of how much shares? 1000 shares at a cost of 2000. After that, the number of shares become 3000. And total value becomes 3250. And after that, there is a bonus. And we have a bonus of uh, 1 is to 4, free of cost. So 1 is to 4. So divide 3000 by 4. So bonus is 750 at nil. Total shares after bonus 3750. Cost is 3250. After that, there is another purchase. And that another purchase is 900 shares at a cost of 1500. So the total number of shares 4650 in the pool and the value is 4750. And now there is a pool identification disposal and that was 3000 shares. What is the cost of 3000 shares? We carried forward balance. And as far as cost is concerned, 
So if 4750 is the cost of 4650 number of shares, how much relates to 3000 shares? It's 3064. So the leftover is 1686. 1686. So this is the figure 3064. Relate it 3064. Sometime it might be a capital loss as well. So from 15,000, it's 3064, and the gain is 11,936. This is the gain. So total chargeable gain is 4,500 plus 11,936. So the total chargeable gain is 16,436. Now, if you have to calculate taxable gain, then deduct the annual expenditure, annual exemption amount. And that is 12,436. This is the taxable gain.